Good morning. Today is the 4th of September and uh, here at Buntingford in Hertfordshire for the Buntingford Annual Classic Car Show. With me is uh, Mr Quirk from Planet Auto. Hello, how are you? He was doing a non-shambolic non-shuffle. Yes, I am. It's amazing the range of vehicles here, isn't it today? Yes, we're still we're still early here today. Um, we're starting at one end of the high street, which has been closed, so that you can just park lots of cars along. Um, with these shambolic shuffles, uh, there might be a bit of wind noise, although it's quite still at the moment. Um, there probably will be lots of incorrect information. I might even fall over and. Uh, just and don't this. miss the sound of a V8. There's bound to be V8s just burbling in the background. Just well, not going to be hear you very clearly at all, are they? No, indeed. We've got we've got V8s everywhere. So there we, we go. So we start with this. This, this is a 1960 Ford Popular. Um, well, this, it was when it was made. Um, I think this now has a V8 engine in it. Uh, um, so uh, yeah, be a bit faster than the 1172 side valve that would, probably would have been in there originally. Yes. Yeah. I mean, just. Look at the bonnet bulge alone. I know, yeah. Um, next is 1969 Pontiac GTO with the uh, hidden headlamps that sort of... Can I just know, point gives... one thing out to you? Have you seen the size of the NOS canister in the back seat? We'll have a look at the NOS canister in the back seat. I think this is a drag car. Yes, I think so. There we go, one NOS canister. So a uh, Pontiac GTO. Next to it is... A Rover 10, a Rover 10 with, I don't think it's got the standard engine in it anymore. That looks to me like some kind of V8. Wow, that's really crazy. 1953 Chevrolet 3100 pickup. Again, I think that's had some work done to it, although that engine looks a bit more original than some of the others uh, that are here today. Triumph Stag, a uh, personal plate on that. I'm not exactly sure what uh, what year it is. I think those seats have been changed as well, actually. They're not the same seats that would have come with it originally. Uh, this one's an auto. So the steering wheel's been retrimmed a bit too. Maybe it's just a small, smaller wheel than usual, a motor liter one. 1938. The Glockland Buick Special. <laughs> From the Enfield and District a veter uh, Veteran Vehicle Society, that's not too far from here. I think this is um, Mark II Ford console, but obviously, we, we, you know, it's got things like an Edel Brock carburetor in there and as well, so it's, I don't think that's the original four cylinder. <laughs> um, Ford pickup of some description, I'm not exactly sure what this is really. Um, there's a lot of American cars here today, so I'm not really sure. So this colour's really nice, it's got duck egg blue. 1972 Buick Riviera. I think a similar one to this used to be in a series called Due South in the 1990s. Someone's very kindly left the um, window open for me so we can see the green interior with white leather and piping. That is just extraordinary, as is the, uh, the back end of this. That really is quite nice, I love the colour on this. Riviera by Buick, 1967 Ford Mustang. Let's just see if we can walk through there, there we go. Apparently a 302 cubic inch engine in it. I think this is a 1961 Chevrolet Impala. Um, not got the standard suspension on anymore, it would seem. Again, the size of this is absolutely enormous. That is huge. Again, a very, very, very green interior. Kawasaki from the mid 70s. There's a Yamaha Fizzy around here somewhere, but I don't know exactly where it is. 1989 to 90 Pontiac Firebird Trans Am GTA. There's an old Ford truck at the back there as well. 
think this probably was some kind of old American Ford at some stage. Whatever it is now, I don't really know. This is uh, an old Plymouth, probably immediately pre-war truck. It's got a nice, um, nice leather interior now. Oh wow! Lots of work being done to the back. Ford Thunderbird. This is a quite an early one. I think this is the original shape. So it'd be about what 1957, 58, something like that. Two-seater bench seat with automatic gearbox. What that thing is down there? I'm really not actually sure. Answers in the comments section below. 57 uh, Chevrolet Bel Air, I think. I think this has got a bit more power than standard. Yes, it's got a good drag gearbox in it. Ooh, Ford Mustang. GT350. Trying to park in this place is a bit difficult. It's a 66. Uh, another Ford here. I think originally it was a 1932 Doctor's Coupe. I think they called it a Doctor's Coupe or something like that. 1932 Ford. It certainly isn't that now. Well. The condition of a lot of this stuff is, is just incredible to us. It's really, really, it's really, really good. See the roads are just closed off. Next, 1978 Ford Cortina Mark IV 2.3 S. Apparently this is one of only two Mark IV 2.3 S's remaining and the level of detail that the restoration been done on this car is ridiculous. We've even got mirrors on here to see the underside, and yes, the underside is virtually perfect. Of course, it is. There we go, original sales receipt for this. Mark IV is uh, one of the rarest type of Cortinas, and this is, um, well, it's one of the rarest type of Mark IVs. 1966 Austin A40 Farina Mark II. Someone's actually put front disc in a brake servo in this, this one, which is very, very, very sensible indeed. 1963 Mercedes-Benz 180B, which is the uh, W120 shape. Local plate to the area, Hertfordshire plate AR. That, I think, is a German specification, one of those left-hand drive. Corvette C2. Uh, Jaguar XK8. Late Defender with a personal plate. Ford Thames pickup, 1964. This one I think is the 1500 weight. 1969-70 Jaguar E-Type Series 2. Oh, it's dark green with a beige leather interior. I do like a nice beige leather interior, viewers. Mmm. Yeah, 4.2. Another Corvette. Not, I can't remember which one this is now. It's a 2008 C6 Auto Convertible. Brilliant. I've actually started putting a little information sheet in the, the window of my own car as well for, to show to people so they know what it is. 1987 to 88, Renault 5 GT Turbo. 1953 Ford Anglia. And uh, I think the old side valve engine is long gone. Yes, it is. There's something else in there now. But someone's had the thought to put it in a nice beige leather interior. 
Mm, I do like beige leather interiors on this channel, yes. 1985 Hutchinson Nova Cabriolet. Yes, it was originally a Nova saloon, but uh, it isn't now. I mean, you don't really see too many. You don't really see too many Nova saloons anyway, but to see Cabriolet, it's pretty crazy. Not sure what engine's in there. Ooh, has a little friend on the back seat as well. Hello. There we go, Cabriolet. So it's 1.2. It's an overhead cam engine in this one. Oh, viewers. 1988 9 Renault 5 Monaco. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, viewers, it's got a beige leather interior. I do like a beige leather interior, viewers, and I like this colour too. That is really rather nice. 1964 MG Midget. I think this is the Mark II because it's actually got opening, uh, it's actually got door handles on the outside. Little A series in this. Uh, Sterling Nova kit car, I think this is about 1972 73. Similar to an Adams Probe 16 that was the car with Clockwork Orange. I think this is the uh, Sterling Nova. 1967 Triumph Herald. Well, don't touch anything, okay, won't touch anything, that's fine. It's got a nice wooden dashboard in it too. Yeah, it's Harold 1200. 1963 Humber Scepter. Mm, mm, mm. Very nice. Very, very nice indeed. Very typical of the, of the period, the two-tone paintwork and the um, white wall tyres on that. Again, a lovely dark green colour. 1990 to 91 Mini Cooper 1.3 Classic colour combination, one of those. Right, now we come to the uh, section where uh, I am parked. It's Paul's. 2005 MG ZS 180, which you would have seen on the channel on Tweed Jacket Reviews, with a rather nice engine bay. Now this isn't my 45 V6, this is uh, actually belongs to Wayne, who actually you might have seen on the channel um, before. He's appeared a couple of times, and this car was on the channel last October, I think it was. It is um, quite possibly the nicest condition 45 V6 of the country, and it is for sale, so this could be yours. Do you mind if I open the door, Wayne? As we can see in here, it's dark blue with a beige leather interior. You see, I do like a nice beige leather interior view. The door cards have been changed for ones off an earlier 400 HHR because the, the door cards on these 45 B6s, they tend to go all baggy. And also the later cars like this didn't have the strip of wood on the door, so Wayne's actually modified that. Um, it's looking very nice. The wheels are perfect, unlike on mine. Um, so there we are, viewers. 2005 MG ZS120. This is the 1.8 K-Series variant. That's an engine cover actually off an MG7, which is the Chinese market version of the MG ZT. It's a little bit uh, more kind of um, sort of proper, really, than just a generic one. Again, absolutely perfect as well. Um, my engine is not looking perfect today, viewers. I do apologise. That's just the way that it tends to go on my channel. Um, but yes, this is how I got here today, and uh, Mr. Quirk from Planet Auto is still wandering around. 1994 to 5 um, AC Cobra replica. There's actually uh, quite a few of these here today. But classic colour for the, uh, for the Cobras. This is a 1985 to six plate. Um, I don't know what kit this is. There's so many of these auto crafts and all sorts of things. 
So there's four Puma STs here, and another AC Cobra replica here. This one is a Dax to Hero Cobra, which is from 2002. I think probably that plate is either a personal one or it's off the uh, donor car. Ooh. Vanden Pla Princess 1300 years. Mm. Yes, Austin Morris Group started it off, but finished off by Princess Cars in Kingsbury, Northwest London. This is a, a 73, so quite a late one. The production of these, I think, finished in 74. What I find amazing about these is that even though this is the top ADO 16 you can get, and it's got all the luxury of a sort of wood interior and all sorts of things, you do not get a rev counter. You don't get one in these. And of course, right next to it, we have another Vanden Pla Princess 1300. This one, though, is probably my favourite one because it is dark green with a beige leather interior. And look at that, viewers. You've even got little picnic tables at the back. Do like a nice beige leather interior. Next to it, 1968, Walsley 1300. It's a Mark I, it's quite, it's quite rare. Yeah, I thought it would be a Mark II by then, but it's not. It's a twin carb model. This one's got a green interior. Walsley steering wheel as well. It's got a strip speedo. I think on the Rileys you've got a rev counter. Oh, you're wrong about that, though. 1977, Rover P6, 2200 TC. This is a very, very late one, 77. So this was from right at the end of production of the P6, which overlapped with the um, later SD1s for maybe a year or so, actually. 19... 96 to 7 TVR Cerbera with the door release button just underneath the wing mirror there. Typical crazy t TVR interior. Slightly early one here, this is a 93 Chimera. That's another Cerbera Chimera. This is a Chimera 500. I get the TVR models mixed up, I do apologise viewers. Chimera 500. Funny how this has got vents on the bonnet on this side, and that's got it on the other side. Don't know why that would be. Predecessor to Chimera, this is the TVR Griffith. This is uh, another 93 car. So got a little friend in there. Say hello to him. A couple of mini 1275 GTs here. This one is a 78, 79 plate. That's for sale as well. That could be yours. Now this, I don't know if this is actually an original registration to the car, it could be a personal plate, so a 69 plate, I don't think they were available at that sort of time. Another uh, Triumph, uh, this is a 1360, so it's a 1360 convertible, this one, the 1200, uh, 70, 71 plate. A lot of them had the... Um, a standard Triumph, wooden material, retrofitted. Again, another J registration, so 7071 Triumph GT6 Mark III. 1985 Mercedes-Benz 380SL. It's almost Dempsey and Mate piece specification, this one, the one that Michael Brandon drove in that series. So, yep, there were two of them. One was a white one, one was a grey one. 
1969 MGC GT. And there's quite a few MGCs here, actually, viewers. Double bonnet bulge. 1982 to 83 Citroen 2CV. Those seats have been retrimmed at some stage. They look very, very plush for some reason. It's a special. Two thousand and eight Lotus Elise R, Mark II shape. I thought she's oh, oh there's information. Sheet. Yeah, Lotus Elise R touring. One hundred and ninety horsepower. That's off the um, uh, Toyota Celica engine. Maserati Spider. Mm. Dark green and beige leather interior again, viewers. Triumph 2000 Roadster, sort of Bergerac type one. This will be about 1948, something like that. Here's the dicky seat in the back. Don't really fancy getting in there myself. Here. It's even got little um, places for you to put your foot as you get in and out. And try to look elegant whilst you're doing it and failing miserably. Very sort of 30s looking car, even though it's a post war um, design. Another MGC this time. It's a uh, roadster. I don't think I've ever seen so many MGCs in the same place, but there's another one coming up here as well. Next to it, another classic British design. 1991-92 Range Rover. This one's actually not got a leather interior. I don't think this is a Vogue, otherwise it would say on it. It must be just an SE or something like that, I'm not sure. Nineteen thirty-eight Austin 7 Ruby. Sort of like the one that Mr. Richardson drove on his uh, Furious Driving Channel. Then some motorcycles. Oh, I don't know a lot about motorcycles here, as I'm honest. Uh, BSA. A couple of Hondas, she none of a Honda here. Is, is that a Fireblade or something else? I don't, I don't really know about motorcycle views. Well, there's some more of them. 1965 Morris Mine 1000 four door with the 1100cc engine. This one, it, it's 65 or later because of the um, steering wheel, but it's different from earlier cars. 1996 HMC Healy Mark IV, 3.9 litre V8 engine, and this is a, this is a, it's a replica of the earlier um, Austin Healy 3000s, and they, and they got to Mark IV, sorry, Mark III, so it's a direct kind of follow-up from those. 1950 Morris Minus Series MM. It's a very early one, uh, the low light one, so no head no headlamps and wings or anything like that. You can see just how different it is actually inside from the uh, the later Morris Thousand uh, little um, side valve engine in this one. Quite a few of these um, Volkswagen splitties. That's a 65, 64. Um, that one's just the camper, this one's, uh, I don't know what that is actually, it's still got much in it at all. This one's uh, more of a van shape, I don't know what year this is. They started making these about 1950, so who knows. We've already had uh, one Austin A40 uh, Arena. This is another one. This is actually the Countryman version. This is a hatchback, which is which is absolutely brilliant. Um, it's a pre facelift, and it has the uh, little wavy grill at the front. There we go. The wavy grill that Austin's had at the time. This is a uh, replica Ford. GT40, 
although it says it is, and it, it is a replica. We uh, looked it up. 66 plate, but it is, it is a replica. You probably won't be driving some of the road if it was a real one. 1966 Morris Minor Traveller. Standard of cars actually uh, at the show is extremely high. Really, really high, and this is uh, no exception at all. What's interesting about this particular show is that all the local businesses actually remain open. And um, there seems to have plenty of people here who are enjoying themselves. But right, let's uh, move a bit further down. Some more classic motorcycles here. Here's that Yamaha Fizzy I was talking about. It's got really, really tiny little tyres, but sort of bicycle tyres on this. I think these were supposed to do 70, but they never really did. Uh, that's a P, so it's a 76, 77. No, sorry, 75, 76. Got that wrong. Uh, Yamaha 50, I don't know if that's a similar one to that. They're both kind of mopeds, you can still sort of pedal to see if you can go faster. <laughs> Nineteen seventy to seventy-one. Volkswagen Beetle Cabriolet. Weird. Don't know what's going on there. Ford Anglia one hundred five E. Oh, it's actually a super top of the range. Uh, this is a 64 plate. Nineteen seventy, seventy-one Fiat 500. One of the later ones because the doors open, they can actually the way around. It's a 500L. Another Triumph held. Didn't Start number 1360, uh, kind of very late one. It is a 7071 plate. I think it's finished production in 71, so it seems to be much, much easier to find a late Harold than an early one. 1966 Walsley 6 110. Quintessential police car from the uh, 1960s, although this one is clearly not a police car because it's all coloured in such nice colours. Oh, mm, contrast from that HMC Mark IV. Here is a genuine Healy 3000. It's a, it's a Mark II. From 1962, it's a uh, conversion back to right-hand drive from left-hand drive. This is a Healy 106 BN4 from 1958, which is for sale as well. The handbrake is a bit painful to operate. I've used those sort of things myself, and they're not the uh, easiest to operate. Sometimes you're not used to them. Interesting. 1967 to 68, Ford Transit Mark 1 pickup. Wow. Fascinating. Stoked to see these really, any of shows. Not in that sort of condition either. Lancia Delta Integrale. <laughs> 1991 to 2 Nissan 300, Nissan 200SX, sorry, known as a 180SX in some parts of the world and other names. I think we'll finish here, this first part here on uh, this 1946 Austin 16. Again, again, typical of the immediate sort of post-wearer of 
British cars, a bit like that uh, Triumph 2000 Roadster. Well, thank you ever so much indeed for watching this uh, slightly shambolic shuffle around the Buntingford uh, Classic Car Show. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel for another part of this. Don't forget to like this video and to leave a comment below. Thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching.